Good morning, my YouTube friends. This is the day in the life of Nomadic Bandman. One day in the life of Nomadic, nomadic Bandman. Uh, it is now a quarter to eight in the morning, and that's time to get up, take my pills, make some breakfast, and uh, we'll see what's on the agenda for today. So stick around. Okay, I guess the first thing we do every morning is get up. And then make the bed, get dressed. So the bed is partially made. What I do here now is I have some extra pillows that I have for the back where I sit. Change the bed, change the bed into a sitting area. And I have these pillows that I sit against. Set those up and open the curtains. There, let a little light in on the subject. Okay, so much for the bed. I'm up. Uh, I'm going to take my medication, and then we'll maybe try to make some breakfast. Now, also because I'm a diabetic, let me just show you how I take my reading and what the readings are it'll be a surprise for both of us if I haven't done it for a little bit put a drop of blood let's see what we get 6.8, that's obviously too high. We're looking for 5 point something, or 6 at least. But anyway, that's not bad for me. My numbers used to be always in the teens, which is no good at all. So 6.8. Okay, this is what's for breakfast, guys. Two toast two eggs, and a sausage. And here is my top of the line toaster. And we'll get things going here. I'm going to have coffee too, so let's get that started. Now here's what I do for coffee. I measure off a portion of what I'm going to drink, put it in my pot there, and then boil it. Okay, here's breakfast, guys. Coffee, two eggs, toast, peanut butter and jam, and sausage. Let's eat. Okay, I got a pot of water on to do the dishes. I had some dishes from before, a lot. So we're going to do up the dishes here, get some soapy water going, do our dishes, put those away, and then we're ready for the day. Okay guys, uh, dishes are all done. I got everything cleaned up over there, put all the crumbs on the floor. So all I've got to do is sweep the floor. It is now 10 after 9, so it took just over an hour to get up, get dressed, make breakfast, take my medication, and do the dishes. 
So now all I've got to do is sweep out the floor, take out the garbage, and then I think like most van dwellers, men anyways, uh, I have to, I pee in a bottle when I don't have a uh, toilet handy. I just happen to be parked at a Walmart right now and uh, because I'm pretty regular, I do have a toilet in here but I've never used it. I, when, you, when you're doing the number two business, I like to go out somewhere else. I don't want it to have a in here. So I, I'm going to go to Walmart over here, go to the toilet, come back. And then we should be ready to get out and invent and uh, do some adventuring on our day. Uh, I've got to look at some of my old geocaches, find out their coordinates because I want to uh, disable them or archive them and put out new uh, geocaches in the same spot. So I have to go out and take some readings, um, see what the the old geocaches look like. People are still finding them, at, like right now even. And uh, August the 3rd coming up. I think it's the 22nd today of July uh, birthday coming up end of the month and uh, a deadline to get geocaches out and registered is uh, August 3rd so we got to get that all done we've only got like a short few days left and that's it so anyways we're gonna go out and find some uh, or do some geocaching so come on along spend your day with me Okay guys, when I get out there, this is my first geocache that I'm going to set out. Little box, you have to figure out how to get into it. It's going to go in this container, and then this container is going to go in a TELUS box on a roadside post. And that one's going to be the first one. This one here is a camouflaged container, painted camo. And that is where my gnome geocache is going to go. And as you all know by now that geocaching, you find the geocache, it's going to be hidden. Sometimes not very well. The idea is like this one, how are you going to hide this really well? It's just going to be in the bushes somewhere and somebody finds it, they open it up, they see the gnome, they have to find where the log book is, the thing that you sign. Then they sign the logbook and put it all back the way they found it. That's geocaching. Now the tools that I need are going to be a GPS unit to get the coordinates and my phone. And that's what I'm going to um, that's what I'm going to uh, find the coordinates of where I'm hiding this so that I can go online and put that data in there so that people can go online and uh, get those coordinates and then follow those those coordinates and find this geocache and it's only accurate to within you know a meter or two so some of them are very well hidden hard to find some of them are right out in the open easy to find these two are going to be easy to find and uh, this one's first so let's get out there and uh, check out all the information that I need to make a, a website um, uh, posting for it. And I'll show you that a little bit too. Okay guys, so my original geocache is in this orange canister on this pole here. And it was called... Sometimes you feel like a nut and it was one of those coconuts carved into the design of like hear no evil, see no evil. But that's been since taken away and removed and replaced with this. So now I'm going to see if the new one's going to fit. And I'll have to go online and uh, Changes. So it looks like this one here is wired on and somebody I guess replaced this. Thank you very much. The original one got removed, taken away. 
maybe someone liked it more than I did. <laughs> now I'm hoping this is going to fit, and yes it does. It fits perfectly inside. So that's what I'll use. I'll just pop this right in there when the time comes. As you can see at the bottom I've placed some uh, zip ties for the original. This fits right in there nicely. And like I said, easy to find. The coordinates are going to be right here to this location. And they'll just look inside and find that container with that thing in it. So, what you do now is, on both devices, on the GPS device and my phone, on an app, uh, CGO, I'm going to record the location, the GPS location of this your canister and then oh, when I go online that's where I tell the uh, page that this geocache is going to be located at this coordinate so let me get this all set up and I'll show you what kind of numbers I get okay guys here's the re re uh, readings I've got I'm just going to take the average of all of those and uh, submit that as my coordinates for this geocache. So, we're on to the next. Now, here again is another one of my caches in one, another one of these TELUS boxes, or canisters. You can see the little container in there. Sorry about the noise, guys. I'm right near a highway. Uh, here again, the container's been changed. And in my original container, it had why this geocache was called Liar Liar. Now, what happens is, when you make a geocache to hide, sometimes the name of it that you post online has got to do either with where it's hidden, or what it's hidden in, or something like that. So this one was called Liar Liar. And I, in the geocache, I put a little note that said, once you find this, when you log your uh, find online, is to lie about it. And I've had some great stories about lying it. Now that the uh, container's been changed, that no longer exists. And everybody just says they found it without lying about it. So I'm going to replace all this and put a new thing in there that says you must lie about your... Because it gives you a little bit better stories and stuff. Hey guys, it's the afternoon. Outside temperature 35. Inside temperature 35.9. 21% humidity. And 411 p.m. That's wrong. It's not 411. Yes, it is. Okay, it's 411. So it says. Okay, got the windows and doors open. Give a little breeze going through here. I've got all my geocaches recorded. All I have to do now is go online and uh, enter them in. I might do that a little later. I think I'll uh, sit here now for a little while and uh, just kind of relax a little bit, siesta. And I'll get back at you when I'm uh, when I figure out something else I'm going to do here. Okay, guys, for supper they got uh, hot dogs here for ready to eat for a dollar. So I'm going to go see if I can pick a couple up. Sounds like a pretty good price, actually. I picked up four hot dogs. They're small ones, but uh, four hot dogs, some beans. We'll have that for supper. Simple supper tonight. And four hot dogs for 
four dollars not bad no cooking either all right let's have some supper there I just finished up a couple of bracelets for a friend black and the gray this one's called the shark's tooth and another one here this is a two-colored fishtail and they're both done with a knot and loop connection and then this one here I made for sale it's a buckle this is called the raid the raid knot in green and green diamond they say it's yellow diamond but I don't know maybe on camera it looks yellow but I have a, actually a green diamond that does look green this might be yellow and yellow and black diamond now this one's for sale and these two I made for a friend a geocaching friend Eric an adjustable one and this one is not really adjustable but it's got a loop and knot connection and not a buckle one-handed it's pretty tough okay there we go a loop on one end knot on the other now this is a geocache that I am creating for the um, upcoming event in Medicine Hat and as you can see right here you can see the cursor it's called is it something I ate and it is a difficulty of one and a half and a terrain of one and a half a terrain of one is like a wheelchair so you, you can't really go on a wheelchair to it but uh, you can just walk right up to it and it's not very hard to find and it's a micro category here is the coordinates to it um, I also put in the uh, description I put is it something I ate sometimes you have to push just a little to get things to come out right know what I'm saying and he's a little little gnome bent over with his pants down trying to get things worked out I put a little bit of a hint and encrypted it and if you decrypt it says uh, sometimes you have to push just a little to get things worked out and there's a map of where the geocache is located if you click on it it will give you the coordinates to the geocache and because I'm uh, the owner of this geocache there's the coordinates there and it, uh, to uh, anybody finding it will see the coordinates they'll punch it in their GPS unit and then they can go out and find it so this is one of them and I'm putting out several for the event coming up in Medicine Hat here on August 16th 17th and 18th so stay tuned for that hey thank you guys for taking the time to check out one day in the life of nomadic van man as boring as it was it was exciting to me it was a new day it was a hot day we're gonna have a hot week here so I'm gonna have to find a way to keep cool tomorrow if you want to see more day in the life of uh, nomadic van man uh, Put your comments below and I'll, uh, I'll check them out and see if anybody else is interested in uh, one day out of uh, Nomadic Van Man's life. Okay guys, we'll talk to you again. See you on the next one. As usual, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. 
uh, comment, like. Um, I I read all the comments and I and I uh, answer them all. So don't feel like you're being left out. I'm uh, I I do comment to all of them. It's better to be real than it is to be phony. And I know a lot of phony uh, YouTubers out there. Personally, they're not the same people in real life as they are on YouTube. And uh, personally, I don't agree with that. They're just out there to make a dollar. And uh, when I do get to see them, that's all they talk about is money and how, how much they make on YouTube. Personally, I really don't give a shit uh, how much money they make on YouTube. I just want to be real, be upfront, and uh, share my life with uh, anybody that's willing to uh, sit down and listen. So come on along for the ride. We'll see you on the next one.